Bonjour à tous et bienvenue dans cette nouvelle interview. Aujourd'hui, je reçois Prané de Covalent. So Prané, how is it going? Well, it's been the most exciting three days so far in a couple of years. <laughs> Great. Uh, please, could you introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. So I'm Pranay Walson. I'm a senior engineer at Covalent. Okay. And at Covalent, we are trying to become the data layer for the multi-chain world. Okay. Yep. Um, could you please explain me and explain to everybody uh, mm -hmm. what is Covalent and yeah. what you, you are doing in this company? Sure. Yeah, so Covalent as a company started three and a half years ago okay. uh, by our founders Ganesh and Levi. And the, they realized quite soon that all this uh, blockchain data is going to be required by enterprises uh, at some point. And so and enterprises don't like to like switch uh, models or like switch technologies. So they took all of this blockchain data and they put it on SQL. We basically made an efficient blockchain model. Um, and right now, we foresee a future in which there's going to be many, many chains, like Polkadot, Near, Ethereum, EVM-based chains. And uh, many companies are going to require this data. And so what we do is we parse it, we index it so that you can query it. And right now, we have uh, the largest sort of like most efficient querying solution in the market. Okay, and you, uh, what is your, m I mean, what is your job? What what do you do uh, in in Covalent? Yeah, so I'm a senior engineer. Okay, and, yeah, uh, but uh, we got that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what we're trying to do, or what I'm trying to do, is basically make these queries more efficient. Okay. So you see, with blockchain data, there's like gigabytes and gigabytes of data, and in one call, you might have to parse through I don't know, 10, 20 gigabytes. And so what you want to do at the infrastructure layer is minimize the costs of uh, performing each of these calls. Mm -hmm. And so I work um, on the network itself. And so what we're creating is a decentralized network in which every single multi-chain that's out there can put its data into this chain. And um, yeah, and I'm trying to build this decentralized network. Um, and I think we're going to get quite far. We just released our um, query token. It's called the CQT token. Okay. And we're basically going to build an ELT pipeline in which we have an extract, load, and transform. So we transform on query time, so we are much more efficient than anything that's out there. OK. And uh, I got a personal question. Imagine yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a kid, and you are trying to explain me what is blockchain. OK. Uh, because Ooh. today, well, Everybody misunderstand uh, blockchain or cryptocurrencies and everything like that. So, yeah. imagine you are talking to, I mean, a younger, I mean, a young younger person, person, and you are trying to explain what is blockchain. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, as I understand it, to a to a kid, I would be like, um, suppose I, I I give you candy, right? I I give you one candy today. Okay. And then you have five other friends. And you want to distribute that candy to your five other friends. And you want to make sure that uh, you come and tell me that you've given this to your friends. Um, how can I know that you've done it? So you take out your book, and you write, I have one candy, and I break it into five parts. And I give each of these friends one of these parts. So each of your friends has now one part is recorded on a piece of paper. Then after you do it, you give the piece of paper to each of your friends. So each of your friends know that the other friend has a piece of this candy. Okay. And then eventually, you give me this piece of paper. So now I can go and ask each of these friends, hey, it says here you should have one fifth of a candy. Do you have it? If they have it, that's what the ledger is. That's what blockchain means for me. What is the main goal of Covalent? Covalent um, right now wants to become a public good. Covalent uh, is building a decentralized network in which um, all the data across all these multiple chains in the world are going to be, uh, be stored so that you can query it. And so the, the idea is to give back to the public the data that belongs in the blockchain because it, it is in the public space, but make it efficient to query. So data on your fingertips without having to go through multiple solutions and different ways of parsing, which make it too complicated. A single unified API 
across all possible chains. Mm, if you have to give one advice to someone entering crypto right now, yeah. uh, family, friends, who, who you want, um, what could it be? Oh, uh, I go by this rule uh, that when, when you're in a bus and uh, you hear someone talking about buying crypto, that is not the time to buy crypto. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, it, it's usually um, also avoid what the masses say, like do your own research. Okay. So um, I don't want to give any financial advice, but sure. do your own research is the best advice uh, I could give to any friends and family. Okay. Yeah. Um, in this space, um, what is the main common mistake made by, uh, I mean, newcomers or, uh, yeah. I mean, even veterans in, in the crypto field? Right, so those are two big categories. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can say uh, for both, for newcomers or veterans, I don't know, because yeah. you, you have, I mean, uh, more experience than me in this uh, typical field. So yeah. you can tell me what is, I mean, for you, the most common uh, mistake yeah. for a senior in, in crypto and for a newcomer. Yeah, so I've been in crypto for about three and a half to four years. Um, and... Um, at the beginning, um, so I, I considered myself uh, uh, a blockchain novice, uh, like beginner, and uh, we saw a lot of price movements, and uh, they direct your attention. You know, they grab attention when things moon. Um, and most beginners get into sort of this mindset that if things, something is accruing a lot of value in the short term, that is going to accrue a lot of value in the long term. So this kind of like confusion happens, um, which is called FUD, right? Yes. We, we call it FUD. Um, so fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, because then what happens as soon as things go high, they also come low sure. in the same amount of time. And then you're like, holy shit, why is this happening? <laughs> so for to beginners, I would be like, just take it slow. Take your time. Do your research, like I said. Um, and, and don't get like pulled into uh, hearsay, you know? and mass hysteria. Yes. Just uh, f feel out the community, like judge the community, see what they're talking about, go on Twitter, um, maybe read their paper, you know, see what the intentions are of the founders. And, and if you look at it from the perspective of like more experienced people uh, that are in crypto, um, I would say um, look at how open the community is, how open the engineers working at the company are, in talking about what they're building, because in the end, we're building for public, we're building for the world. So yes. how open are you in sharing both your values and your assets? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I understand that. Yeah. Um, and do, don't you think that uh, it's a bit difficult for, I mean, uh, beginners yeah. to actually read some, I mean, white oh. papers mm -hmm. or, uh, I mean, uh, technical uh, shit about uh, blockchain projects or, uh, I don't know, a crypto, yes, crypto project as well, or things like that. Don't you think it's a kind of a uh, barrier to those people? It, 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 yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, it indeed is. Um, I find myself at that barrier. But the good part about a good community um, is that they make resources for each other. Yes. And so you have meme culture. Memes are a good way to learn. They're also a good way to create FUD. Um, you have to have some element of being able to discern if this is something of value or not. So what I would say is um, go back to your fundamentals, like whenever you're doing a review. And if it's too complicated, if it seems like there's too much happening, just don't look at it. Just look at the most simplest version and see if you can understand that. So you don't have to get all complicated and like, I need to know that and I need yes. to know that. Because eventually, in time, with patience and effort, everybody gets there. So just take your time, um, talk to people, um, reach out to community, be on Telegram, <laughs> be on Discord, see what's happening, read. Read as much as you can, and uh, yeah, try to have an opinion on yourself, like without copying other people's opinions, I think. And at the beginning, that's hard, because you learn from like hearing. So I would, I would mostly say to beginners, like, um, try to keep things as simple as possible, okay. and not overcomplicate it. Thank you very much. And the uh, last question, uh, we are here in Paris, France. Yeah. Uh, maybe you already know the question, do you know something in French? Ooh, 
Uh, bonjour. Ouais. <laughs> Merci. Yes. Not so bad. Yep. Uh, what else? Um, I, I know a couple of bad words, but I don't want to say them, of course. <laughs> no problem. Okay, thank you very much, Rene. Yep. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.